When I ask players, how do you aim in tennis? Or what makes the ball go where it goes? Players usually say something along the lines of, you aim with your body. While this answer is incorrect, do you know the right answer? Hi, my name is Jeremy Malfay. I'm with Fundamental Tennis. If you find this video helpful, please consider subscribing to my channel and clicking that notification bell. I'm going to show you the three and only three factors that determine how the ball behaves on every shot you hit and how you can apply this knowledge to become a better tennis player. There are five things you can change about the ball. There's five ball characteristics on every shot you hit and every stroke you hit. And that is, you can change the ball's speed, height, spin, depth, and direction. Now, before I get into the three factors that are always uh, going to contribute into what the ball does and how the ball behaves in every shot, I'd like to mention some factors that are going to sometimes be a factor at least a little bit, and sometimes it can be a major factor once in a while, and that is, of course, the weather. Is it windy? Also, the rack you're using, the string you're using, the surface, the court surface that you're on. There's a few things, like what I just mentioned, that can play a small role in some cases, and once in a while, again, it could play a major role if it's 40 mile an hour winds that day. However, there's just three things that determine how the ball behaves in the ball's height, speed, spin, depth, and direction. And before I give you those three things, it's important to note that you want to watch this video in its entirety as after I tell you the three things, it's not as simple as do this, this, and that. There's a lot of adaptation. There's other things that you need to know. So consider watching the video in its entirety. The first thing is the angle of the strings at contact. So if my strings point to the right, I'm going to hit the ball to the right. If my strings point to the left, I'm going to hit the ball to the left. So the angle of your strings determines the direction of the ball. Now also, the angle of your strings, if their strings are facing up or down or neutral like so, that will affect the height of the ball. For example, you're going to hit a lob, you're going to open the face. You're going to hit a slice, you're going to have the face at least a bit open at contact as well. So the angle of the strings at contact will always play a big role in what the ball does in every shot you hit. Now the second one, the second factor is the path of the racket. The path of the racket, we can talk about the length of the racket. So is there a short racket path or a long racket path? Is the swing path very low to high, almost totally vertical? Is the swing path going very much downward is the swing path level, or the swing path could be anywhere in between. So there's hundreds or thousands of different swing paths you can have, and of course there's a multiple uh, options you have with the angle of the strings, both for the directional control and the controlling, and controlling the height of the ball. Now the third and final factor that determines how the ball behaves on every shot is the speed of your swing. So we can, of course, swing very fast, and we can swing slow, and anything in between. So there's a lot of options. Of course, swinging fast makes the ball go faster if all things are equal, and swinging slow makes the ball go slower. So now we're going to get into some examples. I'm going to show you several different shots, common shots in tennis, and why the ball goes out, or maybe why the ball goes in the net, and I'm going to show you how combining different angle of racket face and swing path and swing speed will make the ball behave in a certain way. So when using these three principles of path of the racket, angle of the strings at contact, and the speed of the swing, I'm going to give you a few tips on things that I think are really important to know, as well as some common problems I see when it comes to the path of the racket, angle of the racket, or speed of the racket. Now, the first one I want you to understand, this is about the ground stroke. This applies to the one-handed or two-handed backhand. I'm going to demonstrate with the forehand right now. 
Let's say that I swing my racket at 50 miles an hour and my swing path is slightly low to high. See this, slightly low to high. And if the next swing, I swing at 50 miles an hour as well, and the swing path is very much vertical. So I'm going really low to high, I'm not going out to the target much with my swing path. The swing path in which I'm going out to the target and not as much low to high is going to give you a lot more speed on the ball, even though you swung at the same swing speed. So for example, I'm going to show you in real speed here. So I probably hit that at least 80, 85 miles an hour. But I swung fast, so of course I'm going to get power added with that uh, quite level swing path. Now, if I swing very much low to high, I'm really getting a lot of top spin, okay? However, I'm not getting much speed on it because I'm swinging up instead of forward, okay? So you wanna extend your hand and rack it out to the target as much as possible if you wanna get the most power possible. So we just said that the uh, slightly low to high swing path creates a very flat ball, so you get a lot of power, but because it's flat, meaning there's very little rotation, certainly no top spin going on in that spin of the ball, then you're just not gonna keep the ball in the court near as often as if you do this swing path, where you're swinging very much straight up, like you're swinging up a wall. However, when you're swinging up a wall or you're going pretty much just up and not out enough, then again, you're not going to get the power you want, you're not going to get the depth you want. However, you're going to get a lot of consistency. So we need to blend this vertical swing path with this extension swing path, which will look something like this. So notice how I'm bringing my hand out to the target as much as possible, but I'm still going low to high. Okay, so there needs to be at least a little bit low to high to create that top spin to keep the ball uh, from sailing past the baseline. So again, the right balance of out and up. If we go only up, we don't get any uh, power or depth. If we go level swing path and go only out, then you're going to get a lot of power and depth, but not much consistency. So to get power and control, what's commonly known as the heavy ball, you'll see that mainly in just the men's tour, you need to get that swing path like so, okay? So it's in between this swing path and this swing path. You want the heavy ball spin and speed, you need to make your swing path create that spin and speed. I'm now gonna show you a common problem I see when it comes to the ground stroke. This is for the forehand, as well as the one and two handed backhand. And that is, players will be in a tennis lesson or they'll just be playing tennis with their friends and it'll look something like this. So notice how I'm swinging low to high, but the ball is going out, okay? So the ball is going out because my strings were a bit open at contact. That's the only way a ball can sail long past the baseline, again, is if the strings are open at contact. Now, what people do to make the ball not go long is people, you know, we're smart. We realize that we're hitting the ball out a couple times in a row, you know. So what happens is people, instead of changing the angle of the strings, whether they consciously do this or subconsciously do this, they change the swing path to match the angle of the strings. And that does work. However, it's really a Band-Aid, and that Band-Aid is going to come off and it's gonna be really bloody because it's not gonna work for your game. If you swing uh, more level or high to low, you're gonna create a, a quite of a flat, a flat ball or backspin. So you're not gonna have that top spin, that top spin for safety that you need to keep the ball in the court. So what players will do again is, I'm gonna keep my strings open at that same angle that I just did. But this time, I'm gonna swing more level, there you go. So people, I swung a lot less low to high there, and that worked because I matched it with the open racket face. However, the fix is the angle of the strings needs to be not open and not close, but just like this at neutral. 
this angle of the strings matched with a low to high swing, the ball will go in, all right? So the fix when the ball goes long is to close the racket face. And by the way, here's a million dollar tip. Uh, we know that we need to swing low to high to create topspin. And that's another way to get the ball to not go long. And also the great thing about swinging low to high is the more vertical you swing up, the harder it is to open the racket face. So those of you who are hitting the ball long, you can, it can really help you to swing more vertically up to control the angle of the strings. If you swing more level, it's easier to open the racket face at contact. It's just more natural to open the face if the swing is more level. Now, so we just talked about when the ball goes long, don't necessarily uh, change the swing path. Oftentimes, it's simply because the strings are open at contact, right? Now, here's another common one I see. The ball is going into the net, all right? Oops, tried to hit that in the net. The ball goes into the net a bunch of times, and then the player changes the angle of the strings instead of the swing path. So there, the ball is going into the net uh, because of my swing path largely. I, I was not swinging low to high enough. So it's important that you know what the fix is. Is it the angle of the strings is not correct, or is your swing path not right? You don't want to make the wrong fix, OK? So once again, uh, this will help you to kind of identify why they're going in the net or why they're going long. It's always going to be either the path of the racket, angle of the racket, or speed of the racket was not correct. That's the only way, because the ball doesn't lie. The ball will tell you what you did not do. Okay, it'll give you an idea of what happened. So by watching the ball come off your racket, It'll watch its height, speed, spin, depth, direction. It'll help you get feedback on what you need to do with your swing path or swing speed or the angle of your strings at contact. Tennis can be so counterintuitive in some ways. And one way is that if you're hitting the ball long past the baseline, again, we already talked about it's because the racket face is a bit open at contact. That's why it goes long. But what people do to get it to not go long Again, as they swing more level, they swing less low to high, they might even swing slightly downward. However, to get the ball to not go up, you actually need to swing more up. Okay, so if I don't want the ball to go up and out, I need to swing more up and out so that I can create that spin on the ball, that top spin, where the ball spins forward from, from 12 to 6 o'clock. So the ball spins uh, end over end like a bicycle tire. So a lot of times, if the ball's going out, you actually need to swing more up so it doesn't go as far up and out. Okay, now I'm gonna talk about a couple of underspin shots or backspin. Right now I'm gonna do the slice and then we'll do uh, some volleys as well. So I'm gonna get this machine shooting balls at me and I want you to check out uh, my swing path here. A lot of people hit their slice like this. Okay, so the ball's going straight down. I'm sorry, the racket is going too much down. I made that. I made that also, even with the swing tap. Okay, I missed that one. So the issue is, number one is you're not gonna get much power, you're not gonna get much depth at all because the swing path is too much down and not enough out to the target. Reminds me of when we just talked about how we want to swing out to the target on our ground strokes and not just up, okay? Because the same swing speed of going forward versus just down, you're gonna have a lot more uh, speed on the ball with that forward swing path, that extension out to the target, even though both swing uh, paths were the same swing speed. Now, what we'd like to do is to make contact and then extend out to the target. So that ball, really nice one there as well. Okay. So you see, I'm going high to low, but it's not so high to low that I'm gonna have only spin and nothing else. So I'm trying to get, kind of reminds me of the heavy ball with top spin. So we're getting a heavy slice with speed and backspin. 
as opposed to the heavy topspin where it's topspin and speed, we're getting backspin and speed because we're getting the right combination of high to low as well as out to the target. So it's just like topspin except reverse. You need to go high to low to create backspin on a slice, but you also need that extension out to the target, right? If you swing very much downward, by the way, you need to open the face even more, which causes a, a more difficulty. It's harder to time and control the ball the more open your face is, right? Assuming you're trying to hit that typical uh, low arrow trajectory slice uh, that, that knifing slice that we want, okay? Now, another factor on the slice is the left to right movement as a righty. So this left to right movement does, is not gonna add power. In fact, it's gonna give you less power, all things being equal. However, it's gonna give you some side spin, which I like. So if you have the right balance of left to right swing path, as well as out to the target, as well as that little bit of high to low, you get the speed, you get the back spin, and you get a little bit of side spin. So you watch the pros hit slices, it's almost never spinning from six to 12 backwards. It's often spinning uh, backwards, yes, but it's more from like one to seven. So this ball spins like this, you get that side spin and back spin and speed, and you can keep it low. Okay, oh, I gotta get in position here. There we go. So, of course the swing speed is important because whether you're trying to get spin or depth or speed, you're not going to get much of any of that if you're swinging at just 50% of your possible swing speed. But your swing speed needs to uh, be largely based on your level and also if you're creating top spin or not. If you're not creating top spin, it's going to be hard to swing fast and keep it in, okay? Um, we're talking about the slice, but but... I think you guys get what I'm saying. Now, let's go to the volley and uh, see what the difference is with the volley. I think you're gonna see some similar stuff with the volley as well. We did top spin, backhand slice, now we're gonna do the volley. You see I talk about angle of the racket at contact, speed of the racket, and the path of the racket in every one of them because it's the only three things that are a constant in every shot you ever hit. One last thing I wanna say, if we go back to top spin, <clears throat> I'm glad I didn't forget this, it's really important uh, when, when I tell players this, they get really excited. They're like, yeah, I wanna learn topspin. I wanna learn this, this, and that because it's really a big confidence builder. And that is, if you're swinging low to high, remember the low to high swing path creates topspin. If you're swinging low to high, creating topspin, the faster you swing, the more control you will get. Because if I swing low to high, and I swing at 20 miles an hour and I create, I'll create a little bit of topspin because I didn't swing fast enough to create a lot of topspin, meaning the ball rotates really, really fast. If I swing at, say, 60 miles an hour with that same swing path, the ball is going to have a lot more spin, many more rotations before the bounce. Okay, it's going to spin much faster and the ball is going to drop quicker as opposed to when I swung slowly. So again, the faster you swing, the more control you get because the more spin you create on the ball, uh, the, the more that ball is gonna drop, okay? So what Tossman does is it makes the ball drop into the court before it passes the baseline. Of course, you also have to have the uh, angle of the strings correct at contact. But again, assuming you're swinging low to high, the faster you swing, the more control you get because you add more spin. The more spin you have, assuming top spin, the more control you will get. Okay, now players who swing level, players that have the wrong swing path, the swing path that makes a flat ball, or a ball that has very little spin, or typically a ball that has side spin, they cannot swing very fast because actually when you have more of a level swing path, the faster you swing, the less control you get. So it's important you have the right swing path to create that top spin, and then you'll feel like the faster you swing, the better, because it's true. You can swing as fast as you want, and that ball will stay in the court. Again, that swing path is everything, and of course you need those strings at the, just the right angle at contact as well. 
Now I'm going to demonstrate the backhand volley, although everything I'm about to say applies to the forehand volley as well. Three very common issues I see with the backhand volley. Again, this video all revolves around angle of the racket, path of the racket, speed of the racket. Here is the first problem I see with the volleys. I'm sure you've heard this one. Don't swing on your volley. Don't swing on your volley. Now, I think people don't realize why you don't want to swing on your volley. Now, the reason you don't want to swing on your volley is because the more length of your racket path or the more swing you have, the more difficult it is to time the volley, okay? The more difficult it is to control the ball. For example, when I make contact on my volley, my strings will be about this much open, okay? Now, if I do a backswing, and then after I hit, I do a long follow through, how am I gonna time this? Because look at the angle of my strings. Angle of my strings are open. This is bad, 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 good. And the bad, 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 bad. So it's very difficult. The ball is on your racket for four or five milliseconds, and you're trying to time this swing so that at contact your strings are like this. Uh-uh, that's not gonna happen. So check this out. Notice how my strings stay uh, more or less to the target from the beginning to contact and to the end of the volley. It's much more simple. It's easier to, to uh, control the ball when the strings stay at that angle. We already talked about the angle of the strings at contact determines the height of the ball and the direction of the ball. So check this out. And my strings here. And then I keep my strings to the target. Okay, beginning, contact, and end. So it's a lot easier to control the racket if I don't move it all this much, right? And bonus tip, when you volley, the power should come from the feet. So you might be thinking, if I volley like this, how in the world am I gonna get power? Power comes from pushing off the ground, power comes from weight transfer going forward, and a lot of the power comes from the ball that you are receiving, right? Now, second issue I see with the volleys. This, what I'm about to show you, makes it very difficult to control the ball you will not have much power at all, and uh, it's gonna cause a lot of miss hits on the frame. So check this out. So notice I'm going really high to low. I'm exaggerating this a little bit, but you'd be surprised how some people really volley like this. You see I'm going way too much high to low on my volley. That's gonna create a lot of spin, and you might be thinking, okay, well, if I'm creating more spin doing that, isn't that gonna give me more control? Well, yes, if you can time it well, but timing it is really difficult. And again, you're not gonna get that, that uh, pop on the ball. It's not gonna go fast. Uh, it's, it's not gonna skid through the court. So what we wanna do, of course, is we're gonna go uh, slightly high to low. Uh, it depends on the volley. We'll talk more about this in a moment, but uh, about adaptations and such. But you typically could go, I'm sorry, you typically go high to low on a volley, so you don't want to go too much high to low. Did you see that? So I'm going almost level racket path here. All right? I'm not chopping down like this. That just makes volleying so difficult. I tell people all the time, volleys are the simplest shot by far in terms of the technique because look at this, a ground stroke, there's so much movement. A volley, all it is is this, but people complicate the volley with the swings and all this unnecessary stuff. Now, this, the third and final thing I wanna talk about with the volley uh, also has to do with the racket path, and it's kind of similar to the chopping down. Uh, however, it's, it's kind of a different issue in that people will break their wrist uh, a forehand volley or backhand volley and they just kind of lose this structure in the wrist. So check, check out my wrist here. So you see how this stays the same throughout the volley from beginning to end. However, a lot of people will do this stuff. See that? So anytime you're moving the racket, you know, unnecessarily like that, it's just gonna be harder to time and get the angle of the strings at just the right uh, angle at contact. So we don't wanna do this kind of this kind of stuff. All right, that one I accidentally did pretty good. That one we don't want. Okay, watch this one. 
That's what we want. I actually have a, a habit to, uh, of doing a little too much backswing. You might have seen it on that one. On my back in ball, so when the ball comes fast, I'm in big trouble. Um, once again, end of the video, we're going to talk about technical adaptations to the ball you're receiving and what you're trying to do with the ball. I'm going to demonstrate a few foreign volleys here. This is one of my best shots, and I want you to just check out. I have the right balance of out to the target, okay, my extension. We talked about that on the slice, talked about on the ground strokes. I'm going out to the target. I have the right amount of slightly downward movement of my racket path, and I have the right amount of, of hand speed or uh, uh, swing speed based on the situation I'm in. So let's see what we've got here. So this is a good example I'm doing right now, or at least I hope it is. Whoops, I'm going to move over. Okay. All right, not too much swing. I'm going out to the target. I'm going slightly down so that I can create a little bit of underspin. And of course, because I'm close to the net, that's the primary reason why I'm going a bit down. I received a high ball. So um, now, if you look at my foreign volley here, we talked already about how we don't want to be going too much down with the racket path. Uh, the issue, uh, what causes that a lot of times is uh, people will sail their volleys high and out. They'll, their volleys will go too high and they'll sail past the baseline. Very similar to the topspin ground stroke. And the issue is they go too much down. They try, they do the wrong fix to make the ball not go out. They go like this. When the real fix is the open racket face. Just like ground stroke, if your ball goes long, it's because your strings were open. So what people do is they start chopping down, which can work, but again, it's very, very difficult to time that. That's why pros don't even do that, especially on a foreign volley. Um, so it's, it's important that uh, you make the right fix. Ball's going long, you need to adjust the angle of your strings and or maybe your swing path, but you should not be, uh, at least not in this way, adjust your swing path. Maybe slightly more down but more than likely your strings are just too much open. So if you're someone who's chopping down very, very often, it's because you're trying to make the ball not go long. Again, we already talked about the fix for that, like the ground stroke, is to not have the racket face so open at contact. Your exact swing path, racket face angle, and swing speed for each shot and any stroke in tennis will be determined by the ball you're receiving and what you're trying to do with the ball. So essentially there is no such thing as perfect technique for any stroke since you'll never receive or send the same ball. In this particular swing, I am swinging very level because I am well inside the baseline and I'm making contact at shoulder to head level. I extend my arm out to the target with my arm nearly straight during and after contact because I'm trying to knock the snot out of the ball. There's no topspin needed here since it's an easy ball. Contact is made well above the net and once again I'm well inside the baseline so swinging very much low to high is not needed here. I'm trying to take time away from the opponent so again I'm hitting with power not much spin. Had I been behind the baseline, I would have had a much more low to high swing path and created spin because I'm so far from my target, again, if I was behind the baseline. So because of the ball I received, I had this particular level swing path with a lot of acceleration and a lot of extension out towards the target. Now, if I had decided to hit a drop shot here, obviously my swing path would be different, the angle of my strings at contact would be different, and my swing speed would be very different. So the ball you receive and the ball, what you're trying to do with the ball, determines your technique. I'm now receiving an extremely fast, low, deep ball, so I am on defense. What mode you're in, meaning offense, defense, or neutral, will largely determine your technique.
Because the ball I'm receiving is so fast, I have to almost have no backswing at all and a short follow-through. The ball speed forces me to be wide and low in my stance to handle the ball as best I can. I use mostly just my arm as I should since there is so much energy on the ball I'm receiving, I don't want much energy with my body. I simply present my strings to the ball and target and absorb the incoming ball's speed. I hit the ball back very flat because trying to swing low to high to create topspin would be much too difficult to time on this particular shot. On this shot I am on defense again because I'm receiving a ball in which I make contact just a few inches above the ground. What makes it even more tough is I am close to the net when hitting this ball therefore I must get the ball to jump over the net and drop quickly before passes the baseline. To achieve this I must create topspin by swinging low to high with a ton of racket head speed to ensure I can get the ball to go over the net but without hitting the ball long. I need extra windshield wiper for this shot. My specific swing path is low high and then low again. Check out my hitting hand how it goes to head level after contact then back down again to waist level on the follow through. Because I am close to the net and the ball is low I cannot afford to extend my arm out to the target at or after contact. I also made the top of my backswing lower than usual since the ball was very low. To handle this low ball best I must use much more forearm than usual here and less swing from my shoulder. Also I take my left hand off the throw of the racket much earlier than I usually would because I am under great time pressure so I must move forward quickly. All these technical adaptations are mainly because the ball I am receiving forces me to do so. Also what I am trying to do with the ball plays a role in what technique I will have. In other words what height, speed, depth, direction and spin am I trying to create. Although what you're trying to do with the ball is largely based on the ball you're receiving and the limitations that ball gives you. Let's take a look at a couple different volleys. These first several volleys I am on extreme defense. Notice how I'm extra low and wide in my athletic stance. This needs to be exaggerated at the net since you have a lot less time since there is a lot less distance between you and the opponent. My swing speed is about as slow as possible since the ball is coming at well over 70 miles an hour. I have next to no backswing because of the very limited time I have to execute the volley. My racket path is level to match the incoming and outgoing ball and the angle of my strings at contact is very close to neutral to match the incoming and outgoing ball. Now in this volley I'm on offense because I'm balanced and receiving a high ball close to the net. In this volley situation I can load on my outside leg, I can move to the volley, I can take a bit of a swing, and my swing path is downward. All of which I could not do in the previous volley type because I was on defense. As a player and a coach I have experienced that it's definitely very beneficial to have a target, a specific target, to help you uh, much more naturally figure out the right swing path, swing speed, and angle of the strings at contact because if after every ball you hit, you watch where the ball goes in relation to that target you're aiming for, then you will have immediate feedback each shot and accurate feedback as to what you probably need to do with your technique so that you can get that ball closer to the target. This is a great way, again, to uh, improve your technique without overthinking. So you're essentially uh, allowing your tactic or aiming for that specific target to naturally uh, create the technique to do so. Uh, now you can use a target, I've got a couple color cones there, put the target anywhere you want on the court, you can hit from anywhere on the court with any stroke and just try to go for that target over and over again. A lot of people will rally down the middle of the court or they'll rally just to one half of the court, that's not a specific enough target, it doesn't really uh, give you that uh, feedback I think that a very small specific target does. So take a look. I'm going to hit some backhands. Again, I'm aiming for these uh, colored tubes on the right of the court. 
and I'm going to tell you what I feel and what I see uh, based on each shot and maybe I'll tell you how I will adapt my swing to what I want to do with the ball. That one I need to go a little more low to high. You see how I hit that cone down because I adjusted that. All right, that was a good one. So I'm very close to the target. I don't really adjust anything. I need more depth, so I go a little to high. All right. Okay, one more time. All right. So I could see there that my directional control was quite good, so I had the angle of the strings well. <clears throat> I was just hitting the ball a little too low over the net. So a couple of times I went more low to high, I was able to get that ball uh, much closer to the depth of my target. Ended up hitting that target on the very next one after I made the adjustment. So uh, really just looking at where the ball goes and then adjusting my swing naturally, uh, trying to not miss the target in the same place two times in a row. Unfortunately, tennis is not as easy as do this swing path, the angle of the string needs to be here, and the swing speed should be this. There are so many things that cause people to have the wrong swing path, the wrong angle of the strings, and the wrong swing speed. And the most common reason that players make errors at all levels of the game is from a lack of positioning and balance. For example, if, if when I make contact, I'm too close to the ball, that's gonna make it difficult to control my swing path, my swing speed, and especially the angle of my strings at contact. Or if I make contact too high in my strike zone, that's gonna affect everything as well. So the difficult thing is getting in position with balance. If you're in position with balance, it's a lot easier to control the racket. Therefore, easier to control the ball. So tennis works like this. You wanna control the ball. What do you use to control the ball? Your racket. But how do you control your racket? Your body, AKA your positioning and your balance. So to control the ball, it all starts with controlling your body. If you're in position with balance, tennis is often quite easy. So many, reasons as to why players make errors. It could be a, a mental thing. You get too excited, anxious, nervous. Um, it could be you misjudge the ball you're receiving, which will often lead to uh, poor footwork as a symptom of that and poor positioning as well. Uh, there's so many uh, factors, and it's often a combination of things, but certainly uh, it's really not even close. The number one reason you make errors is more than likely uh, your positioning and balance, okay? Because that is going to affect your uh, control of the racket, therefore to control the ball. So for example, if I'm hitting a forehand, talked about this briefly already, I wanna get back to this. If I'm too far from the ball, my strings will naturally close. So watch this, the other strings close. If I get too close to the ball, my strings will naturally open, all right? So, if you are in position, once again, it's easier to control the racket. The racket is much more naturally aligned the way we want it to be when we are in position, when we got that ball in our strike zone. If you have the spacing without it being too much space, then you can have the right technique and swing freely. So uh, the reason, one of the many reasons why the pros are so good is because their awareness of where the racket is, is tremendously Great, okay, if those two words can go together. Um, because of how often they played, obviously they're very talented, but if you can increase your racket awareness, in other words, where your racket is, even if you're not in position, because tennis is very often about um, being in emergency and figuring out a way to get out of it. I'm actually gonna talk about this in next week's video, how you can improve your awareness of, of your racket, okay? How can we know exactly where our racket is in space and the angle of our strings in space? So again, it starts with the body, you control your body. In other words, your positioning and balance, then you can control uh, your racket, and therefore, if you control the racket, you control the ball. So uh, thank you so much again for watching. Uh, please subscribe and hit that notification bell if you haven't already. 
And I look forward to seeing everyone uh, Sunday of next week. Every video I do is on Sunday, or I put it out on a Sunday. So uh, give me a comment. Let me know what you think of this video. I'm hoping it, it excites you all. I think this is um, some really great information, so I'd love to hear what you guys think.